The time has finally come. Starfield's first expansion is finally here, and that comes with a 17.8 gigabyte update to the game. The Shared Space launch ran into some confusion for many because while the game did update promptly with that initial download at 11 a.m. Eastern today, this first download didn't actually include the DLC file, so many people immediately jumped into the game and it looked like you had the DLC installed, but no, in reality you didn't and you had to wait a little longer for a second download of 8.6 gigabytes at least on Steam, which does include the DLC content. So a rocky start to Shard Space for some out there, but this truly is two separate things. Starfield Shard Space expansion is of course finally here, and I'll go over my first impressions after playing for several hours. Because, yeah, I do have some thoughts already, there are definitely pros and cons to this expansion, and of course, the community is already voicing some of those concerns. But even beyond the expansion, Starfield did just get a new update to the base game, and some of the changes from this are incredibly important, and we need to highlight them. But hey, if you want healthier and easier to eat meals, today's video sponsor, HelloFresh, is for you. And it'll even get you a nice discount. HelloFresh lets me actually enjoy cooking. Half the battle was getting through the grocery store, but with HelloFresh, you'll get a big box delivered right to your front door. This will come with a ton of meal options, each with very easy to follow cooking instructions that completely remove the hassle of cooking, but also pre-portioned ingredients so you'll have just about everything you'll need. And like, yeah, even I can make some pretty great looking meals with HelloFresh, this one only took me 15 minutes to cook. And HelloFresh is convenience while saving money. You get just the ingredients you need, minimizing waste, and with all these great meal options easily accessible in your fridge, I was never wondering what's for dinner and then just folding and eating out. And the meals don't get boring, HelloFresh has 50 dinner options each week, including over 30 options for calorie smart and protein smart. And since you watched this video, you're in luck. Click the link in the description or use my code to get 10 free meals plus free breakfast for life. One breakfast item per box while subscription is active if you're in the US. Outside the US, the local discount will apply. But looking at some of the shared space content first, I have several hours played in this expansion right now, and I did a nice mix of things. I completed a bunch of main story missions, a few side quests as well, including exploring some of the different outcomes of side quests, what kind of choice and consequence there is, but also I did some adventuring around just generally to see what has changed in the broader game from this update in DLC. But I think depending on who you are and what you're really hoping for from Starfield right now, shared space is either amazing or not really worth it at all. Because when it comes to some of the new visuals and really the story, this DLC is incredibly engrossing. In my initial few hours, I felt completely sucked into this world and wanted to find out more and more. Early into the DLC, you're going to be transported to a faraway land. This is the home of House Varun. And from the second you step foot here, things will genuinely feel foreign. But that's to use custom building kits all over the city, so even simple things like staircases, doorways, and some of the shrines around you all feel completely foreign and do genuinely look foreign compared to the rest of Starfield. If you haven't been playing Starfield for the past year, this might not feel as big of a deal for you. But if you have been consistently playing, I think the first time you explore around Dazra City will be pretty special because everything does feel so unique. I've noticed that many of the accents featured from these new NPCs are different from the accents you could find during the main story and the base game, as well as Varun Kai has far more face tattoos than anywhere else in the settled systems. And just overall, it feels like they captured that feeling of walking into a strange new culture. It honestly gave me Dune vibes. And of course, the landscape itself is stunning. New weathers dominate the sky, and Dazra City is a clear highlight here. Organic exploration is thankfully back in Starfield. No more having to fast travel around in your spaceship. And honestly, this is one of those DLCs where you probably don't need to fast travel at all if you don't want to. They recently added these new vehicles into the game with the Rev-8 buggy, and Shared Space is laid out with a nice road system that'll interconnect each of the major locations so you can drive around and it's fairly easy. And there's going to be a mix of things here. Just new handcrafted locations are going to be all over, but there's also going to be points of interest too. And this all does come together to have that Bethesda magic once again. I was exploring the city, going through the main quest, but then of course I get sidetracked by two NPCs arguing, and then I spend an hour side questing with them and discovering new and different parts of the city and its surrounding. I think Shard Space really manages to hit it well on two fronts. The main quest, Mystery, is really compelling. I don't want to spoil anything around this, but even from an early point, you're kind of drawn in as to what's going on here. Something strange happened, and the other NPCs are trying to figure out with your help, and you genuinely want to find out more. As a main quest, I was motivated to keep doing, which is not something I could say for the base game main quest. 
But even beyond that, the Varun people are also super compelling. The uniqueness and really the coolness of this culture will suck you in, making many of these side quests really interesting pieces of content, because you do get to start peeling back the layers of who these people are. This is a city affected by disaster, and Bethesda has random encounter NPCs around to really show you how bad things are. It's a world that you can very quickly get immersed in, and it feels like it has quite a few interesting stories to tell. Although obviously as of right now, I can't tell the scope of this content. But if you are going to play this DLC, please bring Andrea with you. Even if you don't know her secret just yet, this companion will consistently add commentary to the customs and culture on Varun Kai, and it really felt like it added to the experience because a lot of the time, you don't really know what's going on. So something happens, you don't know how to react, but your companion weighs in with their take on the situation, and it really helps with navigating what's going on. But Shadow Space really does feel like just a story expansion, at least based off my initial hours and impressions. And that isn't to say it's a good or bad bad thing, but if you are looking for a broader change to Starfield for the rest of the game to be overhauled, kind of like Cyberpunk 2.0, that is definitely not this. I mean, honestly, after a couple of hours, even compared to other expansions like, say, a Far Harbor, it feels like Shroud Space is lighter on the content, on the stuff and things side compared to what you would typically expect from an expansion like this. There are new weapons added, but at least as of right now, based on data mines, it seems like it is just two new weapons, and while, well, yeah, they're really cool, mechanically being quite distinct compared to other weapons in the game, but also having really nice animations and visuals. But beyond that, you'll find enemies using reskinned weapons from the base game that also have a new ammo type on them, which just feels a little bit lazy. It feels like it would have been nice to get more than two new weapons for this completely unique and distinct culture. There are no new ship parts in this expansion, and this particularly is frustrating a lot of people. It was previously mentioned how expanded ship customization would be a part of the expansion, but it seems like they literally just mean this new flip feature feature, which is already possible on a past version of the game, but then was patched out, but now they added in a more proper way to do it. I explored for new points of interest, and while I did find one new point of interest, it was still relatively simple, largely just being a shrine to House Faroon from some zealots, and as I continued exploring, the next two points of interest I found were repeats from the base game. And as of right now, it seems like you can't actually build outposts anywhere in the Kavnik system. Their placement is just blocked, although perhaps there's some kind of story unlock you'll access later on. On. So to be clear, I am really impressed thus far with this city and the story has really sucked me in. I'm definitely going to be playing more of Shattered Space after posting this video. But this is definitely not Cyberpunk 2.0, and it's not even necessarily as item rich as other Bethesda expansions. This really is a story focused experience with some cool visuals around this new city and some of the handcrafted content. And while I have really found this story interesting, there definitely are a couple of storytelling issues that have popped up even in the first couple of hours. This is a very early on spoiler that's relatively light, but if you're trying to go in blind, I would skip to the next section of this video. But to do this DLC, you do have to join House Faroon, considering there are other religions in Starfield that people might want to roleplay around, particularly considering there are traits associated with those religions. It does feel a bit interesting from a roleplaying perspective to compel you to choose this one. You don't have a choice. If you don't want to join, you just can't do most of the content. The quests overall did have quite a few choices to them, and I found the content of the quest to be really interesting. I was having fun all along the way. But during one of the side quests, there were four very distinct different outcomes, or at least it seemed that way, but in reality, once you actually went each of those different paths, you found that everything kind of ended up in the exact same way. And in two of the outcomes, where you side with either one character or another character, both of those characters will actually use the same pieces of dialogue, at least for part of the outcome, which just kind of felt weird. Like you're hearing the same dialogue that would be said by the other character if you just went the other route. There's some additional custom dialogue beyond that, but things weren't all that unique. During one of the main story quests, there was an entire optional side objective to take out a certain group of people for a specific character. There's quite a bit of dialogue around this. You're working secretly with this character to do that. I personally didn't do it. I just decided to not take out this group of people and it just never comes up again. I would have expected this NPC to be mad at me, but no, they weren't. They never even spoke about it again. And even going up to them, I didn't have a dialogue choice around that, which felt a bit odd. So to be clear, these are still just my early impressions. And overall, I'm having a ton of fun with this expansion. I know it may seem like I'm going far more in depth with some of the negatives, but you have to explain those. Where for the positives, I could just say, yeah, the overall story and visuals are awesome, and that's why it's so enjoyable. Obviously, I don't want to give out any major spoilers as to why they're so awesome. Overall, I'm still very early on to the story, and exploration as well as the story itself is really compelling to me, but I've also seen some very unrealistic expectations out there, so I imagine some people will be disappointed. And for those of you playing it, what do you think of Shattered 
space so far. While I am enjoying the new content, I do wonder if this has the potential to turn the narrative around Starfield overall around. The initial reviews on Steam for Shared Space right now are mixed. To me, this is kind of expected. Starfield has a ton of negativity surrounding it. Most of these reviews are just first impressions because there literally hasn't been enough time yet. So I would wait a few more days to see what the reviews are as people, you know, actually play the thing. But a bit more telling to me is the player number on Steam right now. The high for Starfield today was 21,000 players, which is notable because that is lower than Skyrim's player high today. So Starfield's big new expansion on a launch day is not passing Skyrim's Steam player count on a random day. That is kind of crazy. And now, in fairness, a ton of people are playing Starfield via Game Pass, and those players are not reflected here. But time will tell if players come back to Starfield in mass for this DLC or not. It'll take around a day for the Xbox numbers to update, but I'll definitely be keeping an eye on those. And when it does come to the broader Starfield update, some very important changes did come from this one. Bethesda resolved an issue that limited the number of loaded creations to 255. Creations are mods, and this fix is a really big deal for pretty much everyone that's modding the game. There was an issue where some mods were taking up too many mod slots, so a single mod might occupy 5 to 10 slots when it really should just be 1. And as such, a bunch of load orders could not go past 90 to 100 mods loaded at a given time, despite the real limit intending to be much higher than that. So if you're having issues with mods adding in content that was invisible or missing textures, this update should immediately resolve that. A new ship builder option was added in the settings menu to toggle flip merge behavior. This is a bit of an odd one. Previously, this was in the game, but it was an exploit. It would let you merge ship parts together that typically wouldn't fit. But that's they removed it from the game, but now we're adding it back in as a proper settings feature, which is definitely nice to see. A variety of locations in the world got some lighting updates. This will apply to several different places where the lighting almost got a bit moodier, a bit more defining on the location overall. And while cool, this just applies to a handful of places, it's not really like a comprehensive overhaul. Although Bethesda has done this with other locations in the past, and collectively it is becoming much more of a comprehensive overhaul. And then just a few miscellaneous changes, the Annihilator Particle Beam will no longer hurt companions, EM weapons now damage turrets and robots, as well as they added an ability to create distant LODs in the creation kit, which is going to be very big for mods in the future. Overall, those are some of the big changes to come from Starfield earlier today, and let me know in the comments down below, what are your thoughts on Shared Space so far?